collective assemble. Alice has worked with Semmel for the last 11 years, carefully making places that are respectful of their social, cultural, and ecological context. Her work has included developing projects in, in Granby Liverpool, for which Assemble were awarded the Turner Prize, as well as a range of socially oriented cultural and workspace projects across the UK. Alice led on Assemble's work here at BAC Zafre, Laguna Viva, together with We Are Here Venice. Alice has lectured on her and Assemble's work widely, including at COAM Madrid and Barbican in London. Thank you so much, Alice, mm. for being here. And the group has arrived. Great. Right cool. <clears throat> Hello? Okay. Um, great. I'll just. Yeah, thank you very much for having me, uh, VAC, uh, and particularly to Polina, and um, also to Sophia from Space Caviar. Thank you very much for inviting Assemble uh, to speak as part of this exhibition. Um, my name's Alice, and I'm from Assemble, and I'm really sorry I don't speak Italian, so this talk will be in English, uh, but yeah, if there's anything that you need repeating, just let me know. Um, but yeah, I'm going to talk about uh, Laguna Viva and making Laguna Viva, which is the sort of garden out in the back of VAC on the ground floor, and all of the sort of different people who are involved in that project and the different projects that led up to us getting to that point. And it'll mean I'll jump around to a few different places around Europe. Um, but uh, hopefully it all should make sense. Um, and then at the end, I'll, I'm going to be talking about a couple of projects which we have worked on in Assemble, which kind of relate to the themes of this exhibition, um, which will be nice to talk about. Um, so we were... That's feasibility study that was looking at the rearrangement of um, of the ground floor mainly and sort of uh, the and they just open. Start uh, yeah, we are now, and. Um, when we first got involved, uh, the ground floor wasn't so much like a sort of, it was, it was uh, put on, used with uh, exhibition, really sort of accessible to the public the whole time. We started thinking about like, um, what uh, an art institution or any kind of institution in Venice, um, like to sort of review, like, to how it can be um, operating in the city, in a, a, a city like Venice, where so many of the art institutions here and the cultural events are so occasional, sort of tied in to, and temporary with the sort of um, an event based with the biennales, um, and often it, uh, there's not so much of a sort of connection to the everyday life of Venetians and sort of really, I guess, sort of connecting to uh, like this the year-round um, local life of, of people who live here. And that was something we were really keen to uh, well, recommend, was uh, there's something the gallery could look at, how it develops its spaces, how they can sort of connect to that, um, rather than sort of occasional exhibitions. Um, and so, yeah, so we came up with these sort of three themes, and so that was sort of about production, um, and, you know, sort of how, uh, which I guess is great to see, are doing here, but um, yeah, how there can be a lot more sort of like a production happening in the gallery rather than um, sort of more a consumption based uh, use of it, and then looking at what events do happen here, how the spaces are arranged to support like a sort of a longer term connection to Venice developing as a city, um, and yeah, again, the connectedness, which is like about um, yeah, connecting to, to, to the everyday life of. Of, of people who live here rather than the tourist side. And yeah, so, that's, so that was sort of um, looking at, we started off by looking at some of the, the workshops. Uh, you know, this is one where they make all of the, the gondola, um, I just don't know what they're called, but they're like these amazing sort of sculptural parts that, on the gondolas which they put their punt poles into. Um, 
and um, yeah, and then it, you know all of, a lot of the sort of like waste, I guess, that happens in all of the the Biennale um, exhibitions and etc. And so um, yeah, and so this was the, the the sort of ideas, I guess, that we came up with was. Uh, sort of the first move um, was to look at what we do with the sort of that ground floor space and we thought that something like a garden um, would be a great thing to to bring to VAC and so providing a place where people can just be there without you know spend time um, there all year round um, and there's not really a reason to stay other than just sort of being outside and having a place to sit and in enjoying the the water um, and uh, so and and so yeah so we presented that to to VAC and um, and 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 they were really keen to get going with that and so that was how we started working on that project uh, at the bottom and obviously because we are um, and, and also I, I guess like in a place like like Venice Coming across sort of those like secluded gardens is not, it's quite like an exciting event. There's, there's lots of courtyards, but there's not very many sort of spaces of greenery. And when they are, when you do come across them, they're quite sort of unique and luscious. And um, so we thought that would be a great thing to bring to the, to the gallery. And so, yeah, these were, we worked with a, a painter to, called Eleanor uh, to, to sort of draw like the first mm -hmm. like images of, of, of what that might look like. And then I guess like how that is brought into the gallery, so the, how that created the character of the of the cafe on the ground floor. Um, and obviously we're based in the UK, so we don't really know that much about Venice and like the everyday life of Venice. Um, but we really we thought it was really important to work with people who do know a lot about that and who would be able to sort of have a longer term connection to it. And um, we had been involved in the Biennale. Uh, uh, a couple of years before and um, had met this um, woman, Jane DeMosto, uh, who set up We Are Here Venice. And I don't know if you guys know about that organization. I think so young from, oh, there's right here. Great. Uh, Venice front row. Um, and uh, no, they're an amazing organization. They're sort of like not for profit uh, sort of campaign group who are basically looking at trying to sort of advocate for preserving Venice as, as the city and, and, and all of the sort of threats it's put under um, as, as sort of a large occasional arts of it by the tourist industry and also the, the pressure from the Biennales. And, um, and they're made up of a really interesting group of individuals. So, um, yeah, so, you know, lots of um, campaigns but about the stopping the cruise ships and protecting the lagoon, um, managing tourism, uh, yeah, exactly like this. Um, and you might have seen some of their posters um, spread across the, the city. But, uh, but um, so we got in touch with from We Are Here Venice and he had done another UK based practice called Muff um, for the British Pavilion at the Biennale back in 2011. They were working with Jane to start to sort of, um, yeah, highlight, I guess, the precarity of Venice as a city and sort of really uh, um, talk about the ecology of, uh, that Venice is, is based on. And, um, and Jane is herself uh, an ecologist. Um, and so the exhibition was about sort of looking at all of the sort of different types of bird life that thrive off the lagoon. Um, they recreated the tank and plant, well, re taking a bit of the lagoon out in the lagoon, and recreating to try to sort of show people what like, the precarious system that, that Venice as a city is built on, um, try to sort of use that as a way of educating people about you know, trying to sort of like limit the number of cruise ships that are really destroying this whole ecosystem. Um, and, um, and so we thought, why don't we use this permanent garden here at VAC to become like a permanent classroom for, for teaching people about that type of ecology and, and the risks that, that Venice as a city is, 
is, is on. Um, and also just how amazing it is as well, where it is uh, sited, like beyond, beyond the city. Um, and so, yeah, so our first ideas were about, you know, taking the, the stuff that Jane had developed with Muff and, um, uh, and just recreating these, these tanks in the, in the garden. Um, and so that's where we got to with, with that. And then, so this is Jane here on the right and her son. And uh, we went on a, an amazing trip uh, where she took us out to the lagoon from the city. And I'm sure probably lots of you here have, have done that, but this was the first time I'd done that and it was really incredible. Um, so yeah, so we left the city um, and, um, and we go out to these sort of like smaller uninhabited islands um, to get a glimpse of the, of the ecosystem there and the sort of salt marsh uh, makeup. And Jane was just explaining all the different plants and wildlife and stuff. And, and also, you know, that this is what Venice is built on and, um, and uh, how a lot of it was, was under threat um, and all the sort of tamarisk trees and, and stuff. So yeah, it was a really beautiful trip. Um, and at the same time that we were developing this project with VAC, um, Assemble was approached to do uh, uh, an exhibition at the Biennale that year. And so we were thinking separately, sort of like, what can we do? What can we do in, in, for the Biennale? And we were, um, they asked us to basically do something in this room, which is in the central pavilion. It's this large octagonal room. Um, it's quite an incredible room, to be honest. Um, we've never done anything in a room like this before. And um, it's got this like amazing uh, painted ceiling. And unfortunately, there's actually like an enormous roof light in that, that black bit in the corner is actually a massive roof light, but they have to close it off so they don't damage the painting. But um, you can imagine if that was open, that would be, really cool but um yeah so we we were sort of doing something in this trying to work out what to propose um and um so now i'm going to jump to about four three years before that to a totally different place um because we had been um working with uh for an, a number of years working with this group of residents in uh, Liverpool who had formed a, a community land trust and they called themselves the Granby Four Streets Community Land Trust. And that, I'm just going to t talk to you a bit about those projects, but basically um, we wanted to use the Biennale exhibition as a way of sort of pushing our work that had been developed with them as an organisation. But um, I'll get to that bit in the end. So we're jumping around a bit until I will come back to the Biennale eventually. But to Granby uh, for a few minutes. Um, yeah, so Granby um, is, uh, is an area in, uh, in, in, in Liverpool in, in the United Kingdom. And um, it was uh, originally built as um, this sort of like gridded street. So you can see that sort of triangle bit at the top right of the picture. That that's Granby, and there are these really like beautifully built rows, dense ro rows of dense um, terraced houses. And um, as as an area, uh, Granby was um, one of the most multicultural. Well, it was the most multicultural area of Liverpool as a city, um, and was um, really thriving. Like when uh, when Liverpool was um, a successful industrial port. Uh, uh, back in, at, at, the, at the early of the 20th, 20th century, um, but um, but basically that as 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 industry uh, in as um, the sort of industry started, industry started to decline in Liverpool um, and the sort of significance of Liverpool as that port city, um, Granby also fell into decline and. Um, it wasn't invested in at all by the local government. And uh, a lot of people were sort of like moved out of houses, landlords didn't repair their properties and 
Um, it, it was also, there were also really quite significant undertones of racism in there as well, because it was the most diverse part of the city. Other parts were being refurbished while this area was just being left to, to fall into disrepair. And instead of sort of investing in the properties, they started to sort of demolish whole areas of the, of the city um, and, um, and, uh, and, and, and as they started to do that, in, un, unemployment was, was rising. And this was in the, the 1980s and uh, the, these riots broke out, broke out that were called the Toxteth riots. And it was about the same time as the Brixton riots in London, but, um, and uh, so Granby, which is in Toxteth, um, really became known. These images really defined uh, how people saw Granby as an area um, and that they were, um, yeah, that it was like a dangerous place and a lot of unrest happening there. Um, but even after this, even after the residents and the people living here, like really tried to sort of make it clear that they weren't happy with what was going on. Uh, the uh, landowners still ploughed on with the redevelopment plans and still looked at all these sort of like dotted areas and bits in red, uh, all the areas they were demolishing. Um, and the people of Granby took to the streets again and started a still campaign because they obviously saw like, so, so those are the state of the house, state of many of the houses in the area uh, that, were, that were left empty. Um, and they saw a lot of like um, value in the history of these of these properties, and they represented a much more like pro uh, um, thriving time, um, and um, and something they were that was quite imp important to their own history, um, and that was very valuable. And um, I, and, and Granby was also one of the, and actually at the time was one of the largest black populations in, in Europe. Um, and um, so people really mobilized to try to campaign to keep these houses, but didn't do anything. And the, the, um, the plans for, for removing, demolishing them just plowed on. Um, and so when we uh, started to work, work in Granby, this was in 2013, um, a lot of the, uh, this is the state of the, the houses that, that were there. And actually this row of streets still looks exactly the same 10 years on. Um, but this was, as you can see, they're like very grand double fronted houses and, um, but they were just left to fall into disrepair. And our first uh, piece of work was to look at sort of refurbishing these and, and how they could be brought back into housing. Um, and yeah, this was the case across like a number of different areas in, in the North of England in general. Um, but yeah, so there were just, and there was still a scattering of people still living amongst these tinned up houses, but um, obviously the state of, uh, of con the conditions that they're living was, was horrendous because there was a lot of um, like fly tipping everywhere and crime was quite high, um, but they didn't really have anywhere else to go. Um, but in Granby, it was a, a really in inspiring. Um, they, um, <coughs> the small resident, group of residents who remained there uh, started to sort of take control of their streets where they could, but just through domestic actions like um, painting, planting streets, and um, you know, just trying to, where they're able to, trying to make it known that they were here and that they wanted the place that they lived in to be better. And so actually, when, you know, the streets in Granby are amazing because they're all, you know, it's, it's, even though they're all tinned up, the, the planting is really thriving, and um, you know, and they've also got these funny signs everywhere. Um, but yeah, so it was. It, it's like this. But um, it, well, yeah, you can see on the left that's a that's a vacant house, but all of the the, the streets are really well looked after. Um, and so yeah, so we started working with them um, to basically make a case. Uh, so the project was being funded by a social investor uh, who, wanted, who was basically had made a lot of money in the city and wanted to support social housing and um, was offering to basically give the Granby Four Streets Community Land Trust a, a lo long-term loan for them to do up their, these properties. And so we were working with this social investor and um, this Granby Four Streets Community Land Trust to basically make a case 
that they could take to the council um, so they could then gain ownership of 10 houses um, in Granby. And so, uh, yeah, and so, so, so we put together this document um, and it, it worked and they got given uh, handed ownership of these properties. Um, and and the, main, the main thing about it was that we said that they shouldn't be demolished, they should be refurbished. Like, they're structurally, they were basically fine. You know, they were sort of a bit run down, but, um, but you know, there was nothing that couldn't be fixed quite easily. And, um, yeah, and, and so, so this was what they were like, most of them inside. And, and, and it looks pretty terrible, but, you know, the, the beams are all still fine, and so the external walls and... So um, because they, so we started refurbishing these 10 houses and because the, um, uh, the properties were going to be sold for social house, uh, either rented as social housing or sold as affordable homes, um, the budget was very low. And so that was the, um, the challenge about where we spent money on that, on that project. And we, the main thing was to basically invest in the insulation and the structure and making it stand you know for a long long time but it meant that there wasn't very much left over for like sort of the more like joyful characterful characterful parts of those terrace houses that would have been there originally um, and um, so we started to look at ways um, to sort of bring back some of those slightly more special elements I guess into the into the houses um, through fairly like lo-fi, um, low-tech ways. Um, so this is just using, you know, regular Johnson's tiles, um, which are about 10p per tile. But um, but we we applied these sort of collaged. Uh, they're called decal paper, but it's basically like ceramic paper, which you can put on the tile and then you put it in the other. Bit. And like making things like the the doorknobs. Um, and then also these uh, fireplaces and the, man the, the mantelpieces. So this, these are all made from, um, these are concrete mantelpieces, but they're all made from the sort of rubble and uh, bits of broken brick from a lot of the demolished buildings around the area that are used as the aggregate. Um, and so we, when we were there, we took over one of the, the properties to, to make these, these, these fireplaces. Um, and this is actually a nice image because this is the is this in the first fireplace we made, but it's in um, Eleanor from the CLT, who sort of led the CLT. This is in her house, so she got the first one. Um, but yeah, so uh, when we were doing that and working on the houses, um, Assemble was nominated for the Turner Prize, and so and we were like, oh, you know, what what do we do with this and how can we use this platform? And so we said, OK, well, it wouldn't it be great to find a way of funneling more money into Granby? And so we set up Granby Workshop, which was basically building on um, a lot of the products, I guess, we were starting to make for the houses. Um, but to start the workshop directly at the exhibition, um, and it was a lot more affordable than anything else you'd buy in the Turner Prize exhibition usually. Um, so, yeah, and so, 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 and so Grammy Workshop had just started and at the very beginning it made like a whole range of different products. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, so these are like the, but they're all like fair, fairly like sort of low, you know, lo-fi way so there was the the handles were made by smoking them in a barbecue and to get that sort of smoky finish um and then we were looking at making these sort of like block wood block fabrics from some wood off cuts and and stuff like that um and um yeah and, and granby then moved into uh one of the houses and so i guess uh this was so it was at this point that we, so back to Venice, sorry, but it was at this point that we, we were asked to do something with Biennale and we were like, okay, well, what can we do? Let's do more with Granby Workshop. We can still, you know, this is a great platform to develop another product with Granby Workshop and in this amazing room. And so we came up with the idea of to do this incredible tiled floor, basically called the factory floor. And it was to launch a new t floor tile with Granby Workshop. And because Garambi Workshop had just started developing this new 
uh, product. They got this new piece of equipment called a ram press, which is like an enormous clamp, basically. And they just started to be testing different products with, with that. Um, so we start to develop these tiles. And then, um, yeah, and it, they, they, the tiles were um, basically called encaustic tiles. Um, and, and in a way, like it also what was quite exciting about it was that it was, it really tied into like, you know, Venice as a city is an amazing history of really spectacular tiled floors and, and um, you know, how we can sort of like bring back that sort of care and craftsmanship into, into building again, um, which does, you don't see that often. You know, and there's like the uh, San Michele, Zigzag one, and I can't remember where this one is, but you guys might know. Right, uh, the um, yeah, and so we were starting to look at basically like what we could do, what tiled floor we could do in um, in the Biennale exhibition. And very neatly, this lined up with us working at VAC, and so we said, well, how can we do these together? So the construction of the of the tanks. Um, Started and um, I guess like VAC as an organisation are really familiar with this, but it's yeah it's quite it's quite challenging like building stuff in Venice and you because you know, everything has to be delivered by boat, um, but this is them bringing all of the materials through the back door, um, and then I guess the the structure for the tanks was quite similar to be honest from what um, Jane had already been working on with with Muff and so it was about yeah just uh, really just recreating trying to take like a chunk of the lagoon and move it to, to the garden. Um, and then as they were being constructed, then um, the We Are Here Venice team started to work out all the planting plans. And there, there's some really nice drawings from um, Lorenzo Bonametto, who works with We Are Here Venice. And he's a, an ecologist. And he basically did these sort of planting plans of um, all the different varieties of plants from the lagoon and what, what goes where. and um, you know, and then how we can sort of recreate that system within the tanks. Um, um, yeah, really nice drawings. Um, and then uh, the VAC, uh, the We Are Here Venice team uh, started to go and uh, with uh, Lorenzo Bonametto and started to go and collect the plants from the lagoon. Um, and so this is them sort of like harvesting little like snippets of, you know, they were, they were always saying how they were very careful not to damage the plant when they took cuttings from them. Um, but they sort of transported them back from the lagoon and into, into VAC. Um, and you can see here that, yes, yeah, so these are all the plants in the, in the garden before they're installed. Um, and yeah, it was really cool actually to come, to come and see this point when they were putting them in. That's Lorenzo on, on the left. Um, and um, yeah, so they, they sort of like molded the, the sort of like muddy banks of the, um, of the lagoon here um, and then just planted the, the plants into the, into the top of them. Um, so this is a work in progress. Um, yeah, and it sort of just looked really cool actually <laughs> when they were when they were building this is really sort of organic like elephant style um form um yeah and then all the plants were installed and you can see and and the water was sort of going and it was it was pumped from directly from the canal uh into the tanks and then it was sort of moved around so it kept oxygenated so the plants could survive and thrive um, but yeah and it was like a real sort of like menu I guess of 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 of, of what ben what Venice is, is based on um, and I guess the yeah the point was it was trying to be some sort of like permanent campaign really to um, to make that make that known um, and to protect it um, so yeah, so this was it when it was all installed and finished. And you can see there's there's no tiles there because the um, the uh, Biennale was still being installed at the same time. But um, this is was it 
when the Biennale opened. Um, and then at the same time, all of the tiles were being installed in this big octagon room. Um, and so, yeah, so we sort of um, were working with this uh, local contractor um, who, were, who were putting them all in. And I guess the, the challenge was that they had to be installed so they could also be removed again. So that was a bit of a, uh, a challenge. Um, but yeah, so that, was, that opened um, pretty much on the same day. So I was sort of like hopping back and forth between the two uh, for about a month, which was actually great. Um, and um, yeah, and so this was the final installation um, when it was open. And then the, that was open for uh, a couple of months. Um, and then they moved over to VAC and, um, and uh, <clears throat> started to be laid here. Um, and there's Polina. <laughs> and, um, and yeah, and, 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 and so now the, there is now the, the garden we see today. So I guess in a bit of a roundabout way, there has been, um, there's just lots of, been lots of different people involved in the project to be able to get us to, to make this project. Um, and, um, and it's, yeah, it was sort of about us like working out how we can work together to um, make this happen really. Um, but yeah, so you, we will see this shortly. Um, but yeah, and, and now this is just open to the, as you all know, this is all just open to the, to the public. Um, so, um, so yeah, so that, so that is Laguna Viva. Um, and I, I guess like I just wanted to also talk about a couple of other projects quickly. Um, that do relate to this exhibition, um, but they're not about um, Venice, not in Venice. So one of one, what the, this one is um, one we did in uh, 2013, so it's quite a long time ago. Uh, but this one was um, with, for a music organisation called Cafe Otto and in based in North London in an area called Dalston. And they are a, uh, they're kind of like an alternative music venue who produce sort of what they call noise, but they have an in, like an enormous fan base um, for people who um, like, like that kind of music. Um, but they had, the, they were based just around the corner from this site, but they had access to this site. Um, and they wanted to build a uh, sort of like practice room or like a rehearsal room. But they really didn't have very much um, money at all. They had about sort of 20 to 25,000 um, pounds. But obviously they had all this material on, on site. You know, there, was, there was a building that was here before that had been demolished. So, but they had a lot of this um, material for, for free. And so that was kind of where we, where we started. And originally it was meant to be a temporary building. So it's meant to be up for like a couple of years. But um, it's still, 10 years later, it's still standing there. Um, but yeah, so we, would, we thought, okay, well, you know, that will save us like loads of the cost. We'll just use this material as the bulk material for the project. Um, and also they had an enormous, because they had this massive fan base, um, there were so many people who wanted to volunteer to build it. And so it was also one where we thought we would build it ourselves. Um, so yeah, so we started sort of digging up the, the, the rubble um, and, um, and sifting it into, into these sort of rice bags. And I mean, it's, it's, it's and, and then uh, in these, installing in this sort of rammed earth, um, not rammed earth, sorry, like tamped down um, earth wall construction. Um, and um, yeah, it was quite labor intensive, but, <laughs> but, but everyone really enjoyed it. And um, there was something just, there were lots of the volunteers just, just kept on coming back. And, and then the, because the walls are quite heavyweight, uh, the, um, we, we had these sort of like the, the roof trusses in order to get the height were, were quite voluminous. Um, and so they could be quite large. And then the outside, I mean, yeah, this picture makes it look like a, a real mess. But, um, 
the outside was then um, uh, basically clad in all of the rubble from the site, which is what we, we called rubble dash. And in the UK, there's a, there's a sort of a cladding material called pebble dash that is used a lot of the time, which is just sprayed onto lots of terrace houses, but we call this one rubble dash. But you'll see in the, like a lot of the, the demolition waste, there was loads of like bits of brick and tile and flint and stuff that was already there. And actually it was really, really nice uh, material. So this was the building in the end. And, and, and I guess the, the sort of rhetoric behind it was that, you know, since it was an, only meant to be uh, up for a couple of years, we thought that when it was demolished, it would just go back to exactly what it was like before. So it could just be going back to rubble again. Um, and it was quite nice because when, when this opened, there were a few people who walked by who were like sort of, oh, is that, I didn't realize that that building had been there for ages and sort of assumed it was this prehistoric, prehistoric building. Um, yeah, and because the, um, uh, because it had been built by so many of the volunteers, they will really love it now. And they, for them as a place, it has a lot of meaning because it's all made by them and they look after it and they have a lot of their sort of performances and rehearsals in there. Um, yeah, and then, so, so that was one we did a while ago. And then, but this is one that we're working on in the office at the moment, which is, um, at a place called Luma Atelier in, south of, in Arles, in south of France. And Luma Atelier is basically like a big research facility in south of France, looking at different sort of material, ecological material development. And they are developing these um, large old railway sheds in, um, in uh, south of France, basically turn them into workshops and an event space and stuff like that. And, um, and so, we are working in collaboration with a Belgian practice called BC Architects to basically refurbish the building. And I, the, the, the point of a lot of the construction decisions has been made about what can be sourced from the sort of certain perimeter uh, of, uh, around the building. So trying to make it as like, local as, as possible. Um, and so like that's just, it's, so this is still very much in the middle of the project, but. There have been some really interesting developments from the team working on it where, so they're looking at this insulation which is made from these rice husks um, from the rice fields nearby and all of the cladding for the, um, for the walls on the, from the, on, on the outside of the building is made from bits of broken roof tile um, and lime mortar uh, from, the, f from, from, from the previous roof, uh, so tiles that had, had yeah, weren't fit for purpose anymore. And then they're also looking at these different types of sort of rammed earth um, techniques, uh, using a lot of the like waste um, quarry dust, waste stone dust from quarries nearby, because there's a lot of stone quarries near Arles, and they've actually got this amazing amphitheater in the middle of the city. Um, so that one is, so this block is looking at it in like sort of rammed earth. Um, but then this one is actually looking at making sort of blocks out of the um, quarry dust itself and then sort of like bonding them with lime mortar. And then again, other more sort of like insulative acoustic panels um, using this rice husk again and, the, and, uh, and, uh, and, and lime and also some of this waste quarry dust. Um, and then a lot of the, and then this is from um, bits of uh, stone core that have, that were, again, like a waste product, but um, looking about how they can be recast to make, um, you know, sort of pieces of furniture. And this is um, like a 3D extruded plastic made from algae, which they're looking at making, turning into a sort of like handrail detail. So I guess, um, yeah, so that, I guess there's a whole other presentation about that. I'm, I'm not actually working on this project, but there's a whole other presentation about that project and the sort of context of it and how 
some things make sense ecologically, but then loads of other stuff really doesn't seem to, there's like a lot of contradictions, I think, about how stuff is made. Um, but, and then I guess the last one, which is one that I am working on, is um, based in North London in Totteridge, where we're basically working with this uh, organization, this charity called Grow, and they, so that, the, those buildings to the north are a, a secondary school uh, called Totteridge Academy, and um, the, they had this field, to the, and it's just a co comprehensive school in uh, secondary school, um, and this organisation, this charity, Grow, have basically taken over the, the field adjacent to the school, and are starting to basically turn it into a uh, agri large agricultural plot where they are growing food, vegetables and everything. And they actually feed all of the children in the school their lunches from this food, as well as um, running lessons and workshops and stuff with the kids about growing, growing in, in, in the school. Um, and we're working with them to basically start to look at those little buildings at the bottom right, because they are, want to create like an outdoor classroom in the field. Um, and build that with the students. So that's one that's ongoing at the moment, but could be really nice. Um, but yeah, like I just, I guess like holistically as an organization, um, what they're doing is really fantastic. And they've, um, they've just got, you know, all the kids are eating a lot more healthily now. And um, they also have a much better idea about where their food comes from. Um, and um, yeah, so um, but yeah, so I guess we're sort of started to think about what the building, what the classroom could be made out of, and and also how it could be delivered with the students um, on the site. So stuff that can be built by teenagers, really. Um, it's a single-story building, so it should be shouldn't be too challenging, hopefully. But that's another one that's going on. But. Um, that's about it. But yeah, thanks very much for listening. Yeah, that sounds great. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you very much.